Hi, welcome guys, this is me Darkel and welcome to Death Blow Podcast, the voice of Black Meadow. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the bell because I will come out with new videos, Death Blow Podcast, Instagram profile, Death Blow Podcast, if you have a suggestion you can write me there on direct. And you can even write me an email at deathblowpodcast at gmail.com if you have suggestions and you don't have social media. So today I want to dedicate this episode 4 to the black metal guitarist Euronymous. Why about him? Because today it's his birthday, so I just wanted to dedicate this episode to him because he formed the black metal riff which is very important. So let's go into this. Oystein Oshet, was his real name, was born in Surnadal on 22nd March 1968 from Helge Oshet and Inger Olga. I know this because on his passport was reported his birthplace. He even has a brother but is still unknown his name. When he was a child, he moved in Ski, south of Oslo, with the family. This according to Dark Blooded. I don't know very much about his early life and I wish that one day his family or his brother will be ready to talk about Toystein in an interview. But for that we will need to wait. What I know is that he was an excellent student and a healthy guy according to Monheim. About that we don't know very much from uh, when he was born uh, until uh, he was a teen we don't know very much so we need to arrive to the 1984 the year of change. Einstein when he was 16 years old was playing guitar in a band like Horn, but uh, with no success. On this year, he meets Jörn Stuberud, known as Necrobutcher, and Shetil Monheim from a band called Musta. That means black in Finnish. The magic is immediate. They started to rehearse together almost every day since that day in 1984. Oystein had a pedal with a scratchy raw sound and that was the beginning of brutal metal and the day mayhem, the true mayhem was formed. There are no official recordings from 1984. For that, we need to wait 20 April 1985, the Rock Championship at the Ski Theater. Oystein was blonde, with a little pants and little jacket, and a face paint that was not like a Kiss or Alice Cooper, but most similar to a demon. His intention was to shock the public, and especially Christians. His idea was similar to King Diamond, but more evil and raw. The True Mayhem start to play with a vocalist, Billy Messiah, real name Eric Norheim, that they have met at Ronnie James Dio concert some months before. Remember, Mayhem is equal to shocking. So as you know, Oystein decides to show his ass as a way to shock. Hmm, I wonder if he reached that goal. And because they wanted to shock, they decided to use nicknames. So, Einstein became first destructor, and because he was not evil enough, he changed it in Euronymous. Why? Euronymous comes from the Greek mythology Eurynomos 
that was a demon. So he decided that he needed to be evil 100%. That's why he changed the name. 1986. On this year, Euronymous decides with the help of Monheim to have a side project called LEGO. That means Longus Experimentale Gravkammer Orchestra. That means Longus Experimental Burial Chamber Orchestra. Why they decided together to make this side project? Because Euronymous was a big fan of experimental and electronic music like Tangerine Dream, Corrad Schnitzler, Brian Nino, The Residence, I Stood Zen the New Bauten, and the classic crowd rock. German techno. Even Monheim had a very deep passion for this music. According to some interview he did on a magazine, he said that best albums of Tangerine Dream were Phaedra, Zeit, Alpha Centauri, Rubicon, if I missed one, I'm sorry. About the others, he only clarifies he likes the Residence album Whatever Happened to Wildness Fats and third Reich and Raw. Coming back to this side project, they wanted to celebrate absurdities and experimental concepts into the music. It was basically a protest against commercial music and pop music. There is a YouTube video where you can watch them play live and it seems it was the only videotaped one on the 22nd March 1986, the day of his birthday. They played many times together with LEGO on a concert, but seems that they were not recorded. Another project Euronymous took part was Checker Patrol. Him, together with Necrobutcher, decided to go to Dusseldorf in Germany to record a demo together with Marcus Ludwig, Michael Hoffman and Robert Gonella from Assassin Band. Assassin was a trash metal band that was in contact with Euronymous and on 23rd December 1986 they recorded the Metallion in the Park demo. This was recorded on tape and not on a professional studio. 1986. It was a special year for Euronymous. He was playing live and during this year it comes out to the official Mayhem demo, entitled Pure Fucking Armageddon, released in 100 copies. From the first track you can perceive an obscure present that enters in your ears. Voice of a tortured skull contains a deep bass and a big scream already shows how evil this demo is. Carnage shows to have trash metal elements but faster and faster. On the vocals seems that it was not Billy Messiah but probably Necro Butcher. But about this I'm not sure. Goal is one of my favorite tracks of this demo. It's brutal and the beginning reminds me of Battery First album with Venom influence. The drums are very fast and it's a pity the recording is not very good. On this track you can perceive the beginning of black metal faster and faster. Black metal Venom cover, here it's entirely instrumental track where you can hear the classic riffs from the original song of Venom but heavier and more evil. Pure fucking Armageddon track shows the pure chaos at the beginning and for the rest of the track you can listen the drums faster and that was the origin of Blast Beat, typical drum technique for black metal songs. B-side of the cassette contains a also track with Euronymous and Necrobutcher playing drums screaming and yelling, just to make feel the listener uncomfortable. The rest of B-side seems very similar to A-side, but with no vocals. Euronymous and the rest of Mayhem decided to travel all Europe to promote their own demo, but to establish a better contact with those people 
and to send demos, Euronymous Euronimus and the rest of the band decided to rent a post office box in Langus, Box 751405 Langus. Since this moment they received the tons of mails. 1987, the Euro Revolution. If you remember well, uh, in pure fucking Armageddon, Mayhem didn't have a vocalist, but uh, right now they have. And I'm talking about uh, Sven Eric Christiansen, aka Maniac, that entered in contact with Euronymous thanks to the magazine Damage Inc. Yes, because uh, Maniac uh, was the writer of this magazine. And he has written articles about uh, new bands. And Euronymous found this address and started to write letters because they needed a vocalist. And so Maniac accepted. After he sent his demo Septic Cunts to Euronymous, he was immediately appreciated and became suddenly a member of the True Mayhem band. So after kept in contact through letters, they started to rehearsal together on 17 January 87 because Mayhem recorded the famous rehearsal tape Death Rehearsal that contains the first raw composition of Chainsaw Gutsfuck and even Necrolust but not only their songs, they even played a cover of California Uberalles of the Dead Kennedys all of this on the A side, then on the B side we have here even Witching Hour, a Venom cover, Death Crush and some songs they repeat because during rehearsal there are no uh, static rules. So what you are playing the tape records and you can't change it. So we could say that rehearsal is basically two days of rehearsal with Maniac on vocals. But what else we can say about uh, 1987? If I say the word Kolbotn, what do you think? If you have listened to my previous episode dedicated to Darktron, you immediately recognize what I'm talking about. What if I say Creative Studios? May I remind you something? Of course I remind you something. And it's really important. Because Mayhem recorded their first mini LP right here in Kolbotna. We could say that Creative Studios was the place where black metal was born. Necrobatcher rem remind, uh, reminded on his previous NRK interview that he was searching a place to record. So he opened the yellow pages and suddenly he found this place on Sufjimir Kolbotna. And it was the legendary Creative Studios. So suddenly, or February, until March 87, they started to record Death Crush, produced by Eric Amskog. According to Necro Butcher, he was the only guy that paid for the entire Death Crush album. Because Oystein and Monheim were still at school, so they didn't have a full time job to pay that. And he remembers that uh, Eric Avskog, when he entered the studio, asked where is the snare drum. So he thought they, they were playing a sort of reggae band. So he asked what kind of music do you play? And the Mayhem guys say this is too difficult to explain by words. Just listen. And what came out during these months? It was the legendary 
black metal album. Maniac remembers that he was very shy behind the microphone because he never considered himself a real musician. This according to the last NLK interview. First track was not recorded in the studio but was sent by the famous composer Korat Schnitzer by the ex-band Tangerine Dream. According to Korat Schnitzler, he didn't have time to record an entire sound. So the first unreleased track he composed he sent away to Einstein. If you remember before I talked about that Einstein was a big fan of Tangerine Dream and Korat Schnitzler. He was such a big fan that he had the address of the composer. So he sent the request to letter and the Korad uh, accepted. What does it mean Sylvester Anfang? It means New Year's Eve because he composed this track during New Year's Eve. Korad later on said that uh, if the guys wanted the brutal track he would have improved it. But uh, as you know it was too late to think later on. So basically Sylvester Anfang is a experimental track composed by Kurt Schnitzler. Death Crush is a sort of trash metal track but way more faster. But not like Slayer. It's like a horror movie. Because when the maniac starts screaming it gives you the vibe of a horror movie. And that was supposed to Chainsaw, Guts, Fuck, the intro with the bass, it is, it gives you the vibe of a horror movie, something that is going to haunt you forever. This track is slower than Death Crush, but it's uh, trash metal and death metal together. The lyrics of this song were considered by a magazine that I don't remember, the most evil lyrics ever written. Same for Necrolust, which talks about to have sex with a corpse. More brutal, the better. Necrolust is the most brutal song they ever composed. It's a faster, thrash metal riff structure, and this brutal scale that gives you the vibe of uh, something that is going to haunt you. Weird Monheim is an experimental track composed, composed by Monheim to give you the atmosphere like you are living in Dracula Castle. Instead the Pure Fucking Armageddon track comes from the demo Pure Fucking Armageddon, but with two vocalists this time, Billy Messiah background vocals and Maniac as the lead vocalist. The first edition of Death Crush LP contains an outro track that is entitled Mayhem Outro. That is a remake of Flowers and Birds song for children. From Death Crush we could say that black metal was born and thanks to this album created a real revolution in Norway. Because many bands started to write to them at the Langus Box post office. The label was Poser Corps and was printed in 1000 copies by the company Unitor in Nordstrand. As you know the first print was not very satisfying for Einstein. He was really disappointed because the, the cover was not red but pink. And according to Euronymous was not evil and brutal enough. Another curiosity about this Death Crush LP is that Euronymous signed all the copies by his hand. It was released on 16 August 1987. After Death Crush was recorded, unfortunately Monheim, the drummer, decided to leave the band because he had other plans for himself and sleeping on a train traveling all around Europe by bus or by train 
was not very satisfying for him. So after the release of that crush he decided to leave. Oystein didn't take this very well and was very disappointed by this decision of his band member. Because for Oystein everything needed to be serious. The music needs to be serious. The lyrics need to be serious. And for him, leaving to make another career was silly. But despite this deep conflict with him, he continued to keep in contact with him. So to replace Monheim, they needed a new drummer. And they started to keep in contact with another band, Vomit, from Nittedal, composed by Torben Gru, the drummer, and Kittil Kittilsen, the guitarist. Together they shared a rehearsal space in Nittedal because they didn't have in Langus anymore. So they decided to rehearse together. But after a while, Euronymous recognized that they were not uh, evil enough. They didn't want to appear evil enough. So they decided to file Turbenglu and Kittel Kittelsen. Thank you guys to have uh, Listen until here. Next week will come out the part 2 of Euronymous. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, listen on Spotify, and you can write me on Instagram, Deathblow Podcast. You can even send me an email, deathblowpodcast at gmail.com if you have suggestions and new bands. So, be ready for part 2 next week.